Lost Wizard on the Road, Episode 2, Sulphur Mountain to Calgary, The Scenic Route. This trip is the reverse of the trip in Episode 1. It starts out in the Sulphur Mountain Gondola parking lot. It then heads through Banff to Highway 1. It follows Highway 1 past the Banff Park boundary before taking a brief pause at the Canmore Visitor Information Center. From there, it winds its way through the town of Canmore before picking up the Smith Dorian Spray Trail toward Peter Lougheed Provincial Park. After a diversion into Peter Lougheed Provincial Park, the trip heads out to Highway 40, which it picks up just north of the Winter Gate. It then follows Highway 40 to Highway 68, otherwise known as Sibold Creek Trail. It covers the entire length of Highway 68 before rejoining Highway 1, a short distance west of Highway 22. Finally, it follows Highway 1 into Calgary, where it picks up Stony Trail to reach its end at Simons Valley Road. Here we see there is much more traffic in Banff for this return trip than there was for the trip out. This is because it's several hours later and this is pretty close to rush hour. The traffic is moving fairly well, as you can see. This is actually the worst part right here. Once we finish crossing the bridge, we come up at the intersection where the route out joined up with this particular road. Instead of taking the same road back out of Banff, we take the more direct route, which is straight through here. This travels through the town before coming out at Highway 1. As you can see ahead, there's another one of those scramble intersections, as described in the previous part. I finally got smart there and decided to get out of the left turning traffic lane. And now the traffic flows quite smoothly all the way to Highway 1. As you can see this route is a four lane urban street with a boulevard down the middle. Contrast that with the much lower capacity route used in the previous episode. Here we are coming up on the edge of the town.
just ahead is the interchange with Highway 1. Interesting maneuver by the cyclists there. And here we are on the Trans-Canada Highway. Shortly, we'll be passing the Banff Park boundary. Very shortly after that, we pull off the Trans-Canada Highway for a brief stop at the Canmore Information Centre. Here's the park boundary. This parking lot is probably the second strangest parking lot in all of North America, especially if you're trying to get to the car parking. I took this time to figure out how to get from here to the Smith Dorian Trail. Here we are in Canmore itself. Traffic is relatively light, as you can see. There are several turns we have to make to get to the Smith Dorian Trail. This involves going through the middle of the town. Fortunately, like Banff, Canmore has a great many directional signs. And it's quite convenient if you're trying to make this particular trip yourself, you can follow the directions to the Nordic Center. Canmore could, however, spend a little more money and time on road markings to make it clearer exactly which is a through lane. Look at that! Parking Cars is holding up traffic in Canmore just like it was in Banff in the previous episode.
you can be forgiven if the number of left turns leads you to thinking that we've gone around in circles. We haven't. Here we are coming up on the road that ultimately becomes the Smith Dorian Spray Trail. Up next on the right is the Nordic Center. As you can see, it's quite a steep grade at this point. And here the pavement runs out. The steep grade continues. Watch out for a rock pile and a bighorn sheep. There's the rocks. and the sheep. I should warn you that much of the rest of this video is on winding road just like this. This is sped up 10 times because it's quite a slow drive for the most part. But it does tend to provide a little bit of excessive side-to-side -side sway. While you enjoy the scenery, I'll put on my tourism commercial hat. I'm not being paid to make a commercial, but I might as well. So here we go, information about the Smith Dorian Spray Trail. The Smith Dorian Spray Trail runs between Canmore and the Winter Closure Gate on Highway 40 in Peter Lougheed Provincial Park. It provides access to some of the most rugged terrain in Kananaskis country. The road itself is mostly gravel, but most of its length is comfortably wide. The worst part is the steep grade at the Canmore end. It takes an hour or so to travel from end to end, depending on conditions. It is well worth stopping at the many picnic areas and trails along the route. Even traveling non-stop yields a variety of breathtaking views of wooded valleys and snow-capped mountains. Now you saw that steep grade coming out of Canmore. It starts on the paved section, but it gets noticeably steeper once the pavement ends. It also gets very, very, very rough. The speed limit going up that slope was something like 60 kilometers per hour. I don't believe I exceeded 30 for most of it. Any faster, and I felt like I was going to be shaken apart. The friction mount that I use for my camera it was insufficient to keep the camera in place going up that grade. You may have noticed a sharp shift in the perspective at one point. That was when the camera was about to fall off the dashboard.
We have now entered Peter Lougheed Provincial Park. It's still some distance to the end of the Smith Dorian Trail, however, so sit back and enjoy the scenery. You can see the snow alongside the road. This was filmed on May 31st. That is fairly early in the season, so the snow hasn't had time to melt fully. At the junction ahead, going right takes us deeper into Peter Lougheed Provincial Park. In fact, I did do that during this trip, but it's not particularly interesting, and it was quite a long excursion, so I cut it out of this particular video. Here we are at the same junction on the road heading toward Highway 40. Here we are at Highway 40. This particular intersection is just meters north of the winter closure gate. South of this point, Highway 40 is closed every winter until about mid-June. Again, along Highway 40 are some very nice views of various mountain peaks. Don't windshield wipers look great sped up tenfold? Coming up shortly is the intersection with Highway 68, otherwise known as Sibbled Creek Trail. There's no particularly compelling reason to take this road. It is a nice scenic drive, but it's actually pretty nasty road conditions for much of it. 
the gravel part is actually largely the best part of it, as the paved section in around the middle of it is very, very rough and riddled with potholes. And here we are on Highway 68. As you can see, the gravel section is comfortably wide, just like the Smith Dorian Trail. Travel is somewhat slower than on the paved roads, partly because the gravel is rougher than it looks, but partly because the speed limit is actually posted slower. You may notice several Texas gates. If you've ever wondered what the secret for going over a Texas gate without getting rattled to death is, you may notice the next time you're crossing one, those bands of metal going across them. Try lining up your tires with those bands. If you do it right, you'll end up going over the gate with nothing more than a slight bump as if you're going over a bridge. If you miss, don't worry, you'll just get the vibration as you go over all of the bars. Here's that pothole paved section in the middle. It's pretty clear from the shape of this that it hasn't been maintained at all since it was paved. As you can see, there are quite a few Texas gates along this stretch of road. And here we are on a properly paved section of road again. This section of road is basically taking us back out to Highway 1. There's nothing particularly spectacular along it. Mostly it's forest land, farms, ranches, that sort of thing. As you can see, it feels like a regular highway. And up shortly is the interchange with Highway 1, again with the Texas Gate. That's a sure sign of ranch country, the Texas Gates across the roads. You may note the headlights on the oncoming cars seem particularly bright. It's actually getting towards sunset. It was actually a bit dimmer to my eyes than it appears on the video. This is a common thing with digital cameras. They tend to get a much better lit picture than is really there in dim light. We've passed Highway 22, and now we're on the final approach into Calgary.
And we're in the Calgary city limit now. And here's the exit for Stony Trail. And there you can see the sun fairly low in the sky. Here's a construction zone where they're working on an interchange with Nose Hill Drive. They've been working on that for so long it seems like the construction zone is permanent. There at Simons Valley Road, we end the trip for this episode. Thank you for watching.